And coach, we are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome here in New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. A.J. Klein. The blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. Tackle is made by Cameron Jordan. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. <laughs> on is the punt team now as this one sent away. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. This is Alvin Kamara, who made the Pro Bowl in each of his first two NFL seasons. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Running with Kamara. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Back deep for the Cowboys, Tavon Austin. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Cowboys will be backed up to start the drive. They'll have it first and 10. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Boy, you go three and out on your first drive, and that's not the way you want to start this drive either. Doesn't seem like they're really into it just yet. No, first four plays, you don't want to call it a disaster, but not looking very sharp. Now on second and 13, Prescott. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. 
Well, using Zeke Elliott in the passing game, that's something Cowboy fans are getting used to. Last year, 77 receptions. And you think back to his rookie season, he had 32 and then 26 his second year. But he's really on the uptick. On third down, it's Prescott. Complete to Jason Witten. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Dak fighting his tight end. Witten and the Cowboys have a first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. The lane opens up that time as he'll be brought down just short of a first after a gain of about nine. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. On second down, Elliott. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other, controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. They'll try to throw now. Prescott over the middle, the connection to Hearns. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Prescott from the gun on third. And on the left side, he's got Witten. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. They stop him for only three that time and that'll bring up fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. That's running out of steam and it won't get there. He left it just short, no good. Of course, the door for Maher was opened after a little bit of a surprise move. The Cowboys letting go of Dan Bailey last year. Yeah, Maher took over in the preseason. He's from Nebraska via the Canadian Football League where he kicked for four years. And I saw him personally make two game-winning field goals last season against Detroit and in Atlanta. They go play action. Bridgewater. Blitz coming and down he goes. Leighton Vander Esch wreaking havoc with a sack. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop it. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. From the gun, Bridgewater toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Cameron Meredith, the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. They've had touchdowns on both of their drives thus far, but now they face a third and long. He's going to air one out. And this will be caught at the 30. That one goes for 36 yards. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. 
So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Now it's Kamara in the passing game. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. On second down, Kamara. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Thomas, the intended target, but it's going to be second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Kamara. And he'll be brought down this time at the five yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Relatively small sample size, but that's his longest run of the first quarter. Bounced it out to the outside to make it successful. And to get there, you actually need some help. It's not just your pure speed getting to the corner, making sure that the blocking is taken care of inside so the pursuit doesn't get you. And oftentimes, those wide receivers, tight ends that might be flexed out, they've got to control the edge and make sure no one from the outside can spill the play before he gets there. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Now Lutz for the field goal try. From the left hash, a chip shot here. The kick by Lutz is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. A good drive gets him inside the 5, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Looking to throw again on second down. Prescott going right side. He has Winton. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Boy, you got to think that having the 37-year-old veteran Jason Witten back at tight end is going to be great for Dak Prescott for plays just like that. And you think to last year when Witten wasn't there, it was kind of a rotating carousel. They had Blake Jarwin, Jeff Swain, Rico Gathers, Dalton Schultz. But Witten back out there and doing his thing again. 11 more on that one and another first down. 
It's funny, when I go back to our pregame meeting with Amari Cooper, and we mentioned, eh, what if they play man coverage against you? He almost seemed offended by it, didn't he? I'll beat it. That's basically <laughs> what he said, right? I mean, the best receivers we've ever talked to and covered, when you talk about covering them with one guy, they think that's a personal affront. If they feel like if they can't just beat one defender, then they're not very good. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. A very good gain on first down. Nine yards on the dump off. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. On second and a yard. Prescott looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Schultz. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Cowboys in possession as they've got it with a first and 10. Prescott going to come up first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. On the counter, Elliott, and he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Draw play. Elliott. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. And this offense back to needing 10 yards after the false start. Third and 10. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The linebacker, Demario Davis, got a hand in to break that one up. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. The kick by Marr is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points, not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon. And think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it? Because mm -hmm. that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. Field goals, all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Well, here's a good way to kick off a drive. Complete over the middle. And out across midfield, down to the 45. Here we go. 
That one goes for 30 yards. That was a real nice job right there, working the middle of the field, working against those safeties. And you know, partner, if you get your hips turned the wrong way, big plays can result. And a big play resulted right there. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. On the ground, this is Kamara. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Off to Thomas on the left side. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. Hey, watch the slant. Watch the slant. On third down, Bridgewater. That's complete to Meredith. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pickup there, 21 yards. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Three bud, three bud. And again, it's Bridgewater. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. Call it a three-yard gain, and they're going to have a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. To the air again with Bridgewater. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Defensive end, Demarcus Lawrence applied the heat. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. So we're trading first-half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They start on the ground with Elliott. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. 
from the 27. Prescott, sideline throw, that's caught. Amari Cooper, and he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Looking back to Cooper's numbers from last year after that trade, he ended up playing nine games with the Cowboys in 2018. 725 yards, six scores. Also had the 100-yard game in the playoffs against the Rams. And if you add up the numbers between the two teams last year, he was over 1,000 for the third time in four NFL seasons. They get just two out of it there, and it's second down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. They'll try the right side with Elliott. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be third down. Well, that play was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Prescott from the gun. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. And from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. They run it for the first time with a backup Murray. And from the four, they get it to the eight on a pickup of four. It, Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Bridgewater from the gun on third down. And that is incomplete. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Now Austin. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. And now here come the Cowboys. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? And he'll get it down to the 47 here. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Tenth carry now for Elliott. And an alley to run. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. 
They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. 26. 47 is the mic. I got it. Hey, hey, tight ends right. Watch tight ends. 26. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking to get it to Alan Hearns that time, and it's third down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. So on fourth down, on comes the Dallas kicker, Brett Maher. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And he put enough leg into it, but it's well off to the right and no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Now listen, now no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their background. They were all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Well, Charles, as we peek back to week one, what would you say were the positives for some teams or individuals that you took away? Well, it started on opening night, Green Bay, and their defense, not necessarily Aaron Rodgers and what they did going into Chicago and winning. Kansas City, they picked right up where they left off with Patrick Mahomes, explosive on offense. How about Baltimore and Lamar Jackson? He's you not just a single wing tailback, go. folks. He's a quarterback. And Tennessee, going into Cleveland, Marcus Mariota, Derrick Henry, put up 43 points on the Browns. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard, making it third and nine. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. And that is incomplete. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. And last time out, another missed field goal. So maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, Call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and ten, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Second and nine now from the 21. Here 
Kingdom. Check my 47. Ain't no such thing as a loss. We take a win, Carl. Now Prescott. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. That catch good for five. It's third down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Elliott, and he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Bit of a surprise. They ran it on third and medium. Proved to be the right call. First and 10. For Zeke, what a first three years he's had in the NFL. Last year, his second rushing title, 1,434 yards. Not as many as 1,631 that he had as a rookie, but still his yards per game average was the best in the National Football League. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Now the Cowboys going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. He finds Randall Cobb with a completion. This gain not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. To throw is Prescott. This is Cobb with a catch right side. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That throw good for four. It's second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Throwing again on second down. Prescott looking middle, and it's incomplete. Jason Whitney intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. The kick by Maher is good. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. So back even at six apiece as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And we're under a minute to go here. What's been an even first half all tied up? Yeah, still time to make something happen, too. Couple completions, you string them together. Could get in the field goal range. Let's see what happens. On first and ten, Bridgewater. 
And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Oh Brings up second down. The partner, I want to revisit week one. I got your positive takeaways from the first week of the NFL season. How about the bad stuff? Well, let's pump the brakes a little bit on the Super Bowl celebration in Cleveland. Yeah. They have to win some games first, and maybe now that's the best thing that could have happened to them. Maybe they can settle in because that's a good roster. Miami, we suspected it was going to be rough. I don't know that we suspected that bad on opening day. Jacksonville, the defense is supposed to carry this team. They got torched by Kansas City and Pittsburgh just didn't show up against New England. And I don't think we expected that at all because I thought Pittsburgh's defense was really good in the preseason. The Saints on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and eight. Once again, they'll keep it on the ground. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Here's Thomas Morstead now. He's been terrific so far. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. And out now come the Cowboys. Now we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary, playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only going to fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not going to be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. So we have reached halftime here with not much scoring between these two teams. 6-6 six, six our score. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All even through one half of football as we get back underway in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. They start the second half with Kamara, and it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Again, it's Kamara. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Third and short yardage, Bridgewater. And Gens got it! And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. Jalen Smith, who took a huge step forward last year, in on the tackle for Dallas. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. On second and seven, Bridgewater. Over the middle, that's caught by Meredith. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 36. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. So from the 36 now, first and 10. 
A tenth carry for Kamara. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Watch Watch They run it again with Kamara. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 11 yards there, first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Play action now. Bridgewater. Trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked off by George Iloka. And a very good return as he takes us all the way up to the 35-yard line. He couldn't get the hook up there that time with Thomas. Well, at some point during this broadcast, we had to bring up the Antonio Brown saga. And that <laughs> moment, you? that moment. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Demario Davis coming in for the sack that time. You think back to last year, Dak Prescott was sacked 56 times, second most in the league behind Deshaun Watson of the Texans. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Prescott rolling to his right. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Partner was a definite passing down, but he was able to leak out and pick up some good yardage, even though the coverage was excellent. Maybe it's not exactly how they drew it up, but he still got a big chunk of yardage on second down. And on third and eight, defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. Here's Prescott. Looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football, and now zapped right back in the other direction. So they wound up passing on a long field goal try, but that works out for him really well. That one's down inside the five-yard line. And it's risky because your punter, if he puts it in the end zone, the net result not worth it, but there, I think, worth it. They'll try and get the running game going here with Murray. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Here we go, let's bring it. Let's go, let's bring it. Let's bring it. Back in. It's brought in right side by Ginn. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Now a first down carry. It's Camara. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 10 yards, good for his Saints, first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. Off the play fake, Bridgewater. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. Now, that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Switch. 
Switch. Oh. Here's Kamara yeah. off the draw. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. Well, this is caught by Gam. 11 yards there, just Let's like go. last Let's play. Go. Let's go. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. This quarterback now, after the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and 10. On the ground, Kamara. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. He was brought down by Malik Collins. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Bridgewater to throw it. And he finds Cook. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 30. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident, keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. The busy night continues for Kamara. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And that's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Here's the option going left on second down. And no pitch there and no chance either as he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. On third down, Bridgewater. And that will be incomplete. That has to feel like a very unsatisfying drive, right? You move the ball all that way, and then you can't convert on third down. But it was satisfying up until that point almost like a great movie, and then the film cuts out before the big ending. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. This a 43-yard attempt. And Lutz puts this one through. And they take the lead here as it's now 9-6. to six. All nine points for him coming via the field goal, and this last one puts him out in front. All the field goals are great. But you know I'm going to get pessimistic here, right? Because you've got to score touchdowns to win games in the NFL. I just wonder if all these field goals, great now, or if they'll come back and haunt them later on. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Cowboys' offense heads back onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, 
you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Here's Elliott. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Prescott to throw it, going right side. He has Winton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right, safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Last year, Dak Prescott had three fourth quarter comebacks, and he's in search of another one right now. Prescott looks to throw on first. He finds Hearns left side. Ten more there and another first down. Here we go. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Here's Prescott. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Prescott throwing complete to Cobb, and he's going to get this inside the 30. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Prescott now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. To the air again, Prescott throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott, and that'll bring up second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Prescott finding Witten, and he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. The sack coming from defensive end Cameron Jordan. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. And this one is right down Broadway. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, <laughs> trying to win the tournament going down the stretch.
So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. This is fielded a couple yards deep. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. They go play action. Bridgewater. And Josh Hill has it. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On play action, it's Bridgewater. He's going to let this one go deep. And that's caught inside the 35. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10 at the 34. They'll run, this is Kamara. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From the 31, Bridgewater. So I get a traffic there, and that's complete. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 18. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. But that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. 54, right there, right there. 54, Mike. Check pass, check pass. Check. Hook. Hook. From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line you. of scrimmage, oh, and that's it. Back-to-back hey, -back stops, make it third and ten. His carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. And the tackle made at the 13. He is well short of the first. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. So a big one coming now for Will Lutz. And Lutz's kick is good. And they will take the lead here at 12-9. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. 
And there is a flag as he's brought down right at the 25-yard line. But who's this going to be against? Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Prescott now, a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad, first and 10. Now Prescott. And that's gonna be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. To throw once more on second and 10, Prescott. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him, and they get upfield, get that great push, and what do they create? Space and he takes off. On first and ten, Prescott stepping up. He's going to keep it. And the result here a pickup of eight leaves him with two to go on second down. Now that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. To throw again on second down, Prescott. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. From 21 yards away. And the Cowboys have retaken the lead. And that touchdown ends a streak, for lack of a better word, of three field goals that they put on the board previously. They finally cracked the code. Yeah, they've been down there. They've been in enemy territory, as you said. They just haven't been able to punch it in until that point. Extra point by Marr, up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that would help him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bashed it. <laughs> Super tough. <laughs> this drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think a guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is... That's caught inside the 20! And he takes this down deep on the Cowboys' side of the field. 
A big time play there for New Orleans. 43 yards. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. From the red zone now, Bridgewater. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw, Bridgewater. Buying time to his left. And he'll score! Touchdown, New Orleans! 15 yards! And the Saints have retaken the lead. Well, the defensive coverage was good, so good, he just decided to make a play of his own, and it worked out. Yeah, you often wonder if they think to themselves, was the coverage too good to allow him to run the football? But I think you'd rather take your chances with him doing exactly that, and he beat him on that play all the way to the end zone. Lux with the extra point, and that gives him a three-point lead. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This will be taken in at the one. Then he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Prescott on first down. Sliding out of the pocket. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. There you go. Line, line. Back, 27. Let's go, tight end. Let's go right here now. 26. 26. On second down now, it's Elliott, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Run coverage excellent there from the defensive end position. How many times do we sit with coaches and they talk about a base defensive end, a guy who can anchor and play with leverage? We just saw a great example of it. And how about the bonus, tackling the runner for a loss? One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And he's got it to Hearns. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Dak finding the former Jag Hearns for the Dallas first down. That gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Prescott. Flushed out right. And avoids the contact by sliding. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Looked to me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was 
we decided to take off and go. 12 yards there and a first down. Clock's under a minute. Still plenty of time, partner. They have all three timeouts. That means they have plenty of options in their play calling and where they target on the field. They can throw it downfield, maybe even in the middle, and use their timeouts. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Completes it right side to Cooper. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A good pickup there, eight yards on the first down completion. Now the Cowboys going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Second down, it's Elliott, and inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Cowboys gonna use their second timeout now as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. This is picked up by the Saints. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Saints in victory formation now as they'll take the knee. The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. throw and that's going to be incomplete 12 seconds left an incomplete pass on that last play and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down now Camara. And he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. So this one, a victory here for New Orleans. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this, you know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com.